Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the Quiz the Music Man podcast. I'm Tony Underwood. I'm the Music Man. And we talk a little bit about music, uh, maybe what's going on in the world. Uh, we talk about uh, how to be a musician, how to learn music, and uh, also I answer questions. So I want to say, let's uh, today what we're going to talk about is people ask me how you make money in the music business. Uh, and so forth, and what uh, what does it mean to have a, a record deal, those kind of things, or a music deal, a label deal. I don't know what to call it anymore. People call it so many different things. They used to call it a record company because they made records, uh, but now they just basically uh, are music labels or uh, the industry. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to try to break down how those things work. Uh, this is on a, a blog, and it's also a vlog. So if you're just listening, and you hear me say, uh, look at this, or I'm pointing to something and saying, look at what I'm pointing to, uh, you might not see it. But I'll try to explain it to where everybody can understand it. And uh, it's a complicated thing. It's simple and complicated both. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to explain something that you know so well. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to do my best. Um, but well, let's start off with how the music industry, uh, what is it doing now? Because, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy. I've been watching Ava Max. I really like her. Uh, she's a contemporary um, and a pop star. And she's been doing a little uh, just from her couch singing songs, which I found pretty fascinating. I kind of like that. Uh, you can see them much better because if they're on a stage or even in a video, you only see the way the person directing the video wants you to see them. Uh, but it's nice to just see somebody sing a song and she has just just a beautiful voice uh, really beautiful uh, voice she uh, uh, I mean there's there's beautiful classical singers and all but she's right up there with them and probably could sing that as well uh, and I love just watching her she'll just talk for a minute and sit on her couch and pick up a microphone and sing and that's pretty cool that's what a lot of people are doing because of, of COVID and shutdowns and things. I've actually, uh, I write and record and I market my own music. I've been doing uh, live streams on Facebook and Instagram for a, a little over a year and putting content on Facebook. So I've been using the time to just put content out there. Uh, you can't really go and do performances, but I'm, I'm thinking you will be able to do that uh, safely. Uh, you can do it now. <laughs> People are doing it now. Things are opening up. You'll be able to go out and do performances. So I would suggest that uh, what you do is start uh, performing again. Perform to yourself. Uh, I did a Valentine's special where I had uh, a backdrop decorated. I had the lights off and I had it all poems. I had all kind of stuff. Uh, dressed up in a tuxedo uh, and put on a show. It, it sounded kind of silly, but really... Uh, if you're going to get out and perform in public, you need to do that. So I would say start performing. Get the band back together. Uh, get a couple friends. You can do that safely now with masks and distancing. Uh, you can even have a partition in between two or three people. Uh, that's okay. Have them come in. Dim the lights. Put on a whole show just like you would. Uh, live stream it and record it because you can upload it to things as well. And... Uh, you know, uh, have people promote it, have people take little clips of it and post it on their Facebook page. Uh, after, act like it's a regular show. Talk to the people like they're a huge audience. Tell them to meet you at the merch table. You'd love to meet them and take a picture with them at the merch table after the show. Go over to a merch table, have it being recorded. Uh, have the people come up, uh, if they want to buy a shirt or give a shirt away, give some away, take pictures, have them post it. You can record a little bit. You know what a fan would love since there's not that many of them. If there's five or six in there, sing them part of your song, sing it right to them. Who wouldn't want that? Uh, who wouldn't want you to sing, you know, uh, uh, just a beautiful song to them. Uh, sing two seconds of it. I have them video it, post it on their Instagram. Uh, snap people, uh, TikTok it, you know, do a TikTok, have them sing with you as a TikTok, and then record that for yourself, and uh, 
make an in, a non-fungible token, NFT on that thing and sell that thing, that recording. Make sure you put a percentage in there. An NFT is a new thing. It's basically a, a record that uses the same cryptocurrency uh, idea. So in other words, if I were to perform one of my songs, that recording that I make, I could put that one recording and get an, give it an NFT, non-fungible token. You set that all up. Uh, just Google it or YouTube it. There's a lot of people doing that that know about it. I haven't done one yet, but I'm going to do so here this month. You put that song, that recording up. Now, that's not the song. It's just the recording. But it's the only one you're going to do. So you might want to sell 10 of them. And then you put in there that every time it resells, you get 10% or 20% or whatever you want. And so see, the person has a, like, it's like having a certificate. It's uh, in the art world. Uh, they say what the, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, oh, I'll think of it in a minute. It's the history that you know who owned it. Uh, that's what the NFT does because it's the same deal as cryptocurrency. So we, we know we're going to keep it straight. That's something you can do. But those are all kind of things you can do right now. Write your song. Start learning to uh, record or find a good recording studio that you're going to use and see if you can do uh, a demo and uh, do some things like that. Work on your video. Learn to do video. Do your video skills. I'm going to do a whole podcast on, on collaboration and teamwork. Uh, call it the dream team, and I'm thinking of forming one. Uh, it's just a, a group that you come into, and I heard this, uh, some lady on TED Talk, I'll, I'll have to find out what her name is, but uh, she talks about uh, collaborating uh, or uh, getting together with a group of people to solve problems, because you have a dream, and then you have your obstacle, and you let people solve it, and uh, you have to give them your dream and your obstacles, and then that that six month period that you meet or whatever you work on it because someone knows something. There was a lady who wanted to be, uh, wanted to work with animals, wanted to retire and just work with animals, loved working with animals, had done it over their life, but wanted to start like a refuge for animals, but they didn't have land or animals or knowledge or anything. And so happened in that dream team meeting Somebody raised their hand and said, my aunt or some relation has a farm like that and they're getting to where they can't manage it anymore. They're trying to sell it, but of course nobody will buy it. And they would love to have somebody uh, come and run it for them uh, and take it over. So they matched them up. Now that might all, wouldn't always happen, but uh, whatever. Collaborate on your songs. Get to know the people in your area that do similar genres to you or maybe different and see if they'll collab with you. Who knows? Uh, it, uh, uh, you know, it might work. It might not, but you'll get to learn, know people and collaborate with them a little bit. And when you do collaborate, make sure you uh, write out a split sheet of who gets what, uh, who, who gets what uh, percentage of the, the sales and things called a split sheet you can go to go to like CD Baby or uh, TuneCore or any of those uh, distro kid they have a lot of free uh, advice on there and read that uh, also you can join uh, without paying money and then get a lot of things you can look at and, and think about those are solid places that aren't having their hand out for money all the time uh, but there's a lot of things you can do during this time. You can follow a man called Rick Barker, uh, rickbarker.com. He was Taylor Swift's first manager. You can follow uh, Jesse Cannon, Muse Formation. He's on YouTube. Adam Ivey's on Instagram. There are others, but uh, that'll get you started. So use this time. Uh, what's happening in music is it's changing and getting new, and it's all about streaming and doing it yourself and collaborating and uh do TikTok. I'm going to start doing TikTok here real soon. Uh, but do your socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Snapchat if you want to, and uh, TikTok. So anyway, that's what's going on. Uh, use this time to hone your skills, get ready for your performance. I'll do a whole podcast on that here coming up.
It's a good idea. I have good ideas sometimes. I really just steal them from other people, but that's okay too. So I'm going to put this camera up to my little handy dandy uh, board, whiteboard here. My little cheesy whiteboard. I hope you can see it. I hope it's not backwards. Is it backwards? Could be. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me turn this camera around. Well, I can't really turn it around, can I? Well, this might be backwards, but uh, well, I think it will be right. I think it's just the way it is here. It looks backwards in my camera. All right, so let's talk about uh, how to make money on your music. So let's say you're going to write a song. Let me get my big pointer here. And I'm not an attorney or a lawyer. I'm just telling you what I know. Uh, so when a song is written and performed and recorded, let's say that. There's three things. Let's say you write the song. When you write the song, you have what's called the publishing rights you own. You copyright this. And there's ways of copywriting it. A lot of people don't copyright their songs anymore. Uh, they should. You don't have to do it immediately, but I recommend with the U.S. copyright. Just copyright. It's fairly cheap. So this is the song. Let's say it's a sheet of paper here. I'm just going to flash. This is a, uh, this is a uh, piano piece. This is a Mozart, Rondo a la Turca. So let's say I wrote this. I sat down and wrote out these notes. Okay. That's the publishing, the publishing side, the actual song. So let's say then I went into the recording studio and made a song on an MP3 or a CD. They call that the master or it's a recording. Those are the two rights you can own. Okay. Now the publishing, they, they call it 100%, 100%. I don't know why. They don't say 50-50, but uh, you would own half of any money you would be making. You don't have. And if you did the recording yourself and you owned that recording, you would get that too, any of the monies that came from that. Um, and uh, some people write a song and give it to somebody else and they record it. And uh, so you always get publishing rights from this when it's performed, but they own this recording. You can't, they can take that recording and get a lot of money for it above your publishing rights uh, unless you have it in a contract where you get some of that too. Uh, now Elvis Presley would always make the writer give him half of the publishing. That's just because, because he could do it. He was huge. Uh, now Dolly Parton didn't do it with I Will Always Love You. Uh, she later, Whitney Houston recorded it, but she didn't do that. She'll give away her songs. But, you might want to because 10% of millions of dollars is a lot more than 100% of nothing. So these are things when you copyright the song, it's actually copywritten the minute you create it. But the uh, formal copyright, you have to uh, go in online and you can do that. So those are those two. So you're always having publishing and recording rights if you're recording your own song. If somebody else is, you need to make sure they're paying you. Uh, then you can be paid through what's called the Performance Rights Organization, or PRO. Now, in America, it's ASCAP and BMI, and I think Harry Fox Agency does this to an extent. They do some other things. Canada is CSAC. I don't know if it's spelled right, but it's CSAC. So that means, let's say uh, there's a, a bar or a lounge, and somebody's singing your song. Well, that lounge has to pay uh, one of these PROs. And then it'll trickle down. They have to tell them what songs were performed. And then the PRO will cut you a check for your couple cents, whatever it is. Or uh, things like that. Or if it's just played on the elevator music. Uh, I happen to, uh, my daughter owns a dance studio and I have a, a music school. So when we play music, we belong to these organizations and we pay them. So some of that money trickles down. 
Then you have what you call your uh, admin. These are people like uh, CD Baby, TuneCore, DistroKid. Uh, they track what's being played on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, sales, all that stuff. And they administer that, so they get a portion of that uh, money. And then if you belong, whoever you belong to, CD Baby, TuneCore, they make sure Spotify pays you. They take a cut. Uh, I would go to um, Ari Herstand. Dot com or Google him, Ari Herstand, A R I Herstand. He does a big, uh, he's got a blog. He talks about music, uh, being a music a performer and so forth. And he does a big study of these. And of course, people on YouTube do it as well. Then, so you can get paid by all these the publishing, the mass, the recording, uh, the performance rights when other people perform your music. And when it's streamed or played or bought, you can get it. You can also sell merch and shirts, which probably is going to be the best thing for you to do. Even if you do not have a recording, I want to turn this camera for the camera people. Even if you do not have a recording yet, start working on what you call your brand. There's a lot of YouTubes about branding yourself. Start thinking about that, coming up with some things you can put on t-shirts and caps and so forth and start that. You can go to a company called Teespring. There's many of them. YouTube it too. Uh, and you can design your shirts. You can get a uh, uh, website uh, for free. You can do all that stuff and start selling shirts. And you don't have to make them. They make them. They ship them. They collect it and give you a little bit of the money. And I would suggest ordering a few things to have to wear, to put on giveaway, Start pushing your merch because people will want to buy that. Uh, now, the other way you can make money is performing. Hard to perform these days. You can do virtual live streams on Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, set up other things. You can actually do a Facebook group and people will have to pay to come in. So you could pay for that or do a uh, YouTube, uh, you can't do YouTube lives unless you have a lot of, uh, I think you have to have a thousand subscribers, which I don't have yet. But you can sure upload a video to it and have a private group. Facebook's the same way. I don't know about Instagram, but you could check. You can do performances and pay. You can go to a place, uh, you know, a theater or a school or a, a community theater and, and rent it and do a performance and live stream it. Uh, and then the other way to make money is to monetize YouTube and Facebook. Can we see that? Yeah, there we go. Monetize YouTube and Facebook. Uh, just post your videos on there and tell them you want to monetize it and they'll do it. Uh, Facebook's the same way. Uh, do your own music and uh, put it up on there. When people listen to it, you can get paid. Then there's sync rights. Uh, that's music that you hear on TV, film, and commercials, and anything else, live streaming, Twitch. Uh, that's really something I'm looking into. My grandson is big into Fortnite and all, and a lot of these people do YouTube and uh, all that. So I would say uh, get in on that. You can maybe write some songs and see if some YouTubers or influencers would want to use it. Uh, that's another way to kind of market yourself is to get influencers on uh, Facebook and so forth, uh, Instagram, really Instagram these days, uh, or Discord or uh, uh, Twitch, and, and have them pay them to feature your music. It's great money spent. So that's kind of ways you can make money. Uh, there's a lot more complicated. I could do a, a several one of these blogs on each one of these and maybe I'll do that. But uh, so let's tell you, let's tell you briefly how to set up to make money. So the first thing you need to do is to be an entity. Uh, I would suggest looking into some type of LLC or some form of entity incorporating. Uh, it's a business entity or whatever. You might have to get a license. I don't know. Depends on where you are might be expensive to do an LLC. I, I've heard in California it's very expensive, so you might need to, there are probably workarounds. 
Uh, to do that, Google that and see what people say or get you a uh, an attorney that deals with uh, musicians and make sure he represents musicians and not record companies or her. You want to make sure they're only representing you. Now, they can represent a record company, but be very clear and precise. And when you sign a contract, let it be in there that they do not represent anyone but you in a negotiation. Uh, talk to them. Usually find a young attorney, someone that's just getting their license and wants to do music. Uh, collaborate with them. Uh, let them go over contracts with you and so forth. Write a song for them and tell them if they'll go over contracts with you, you'll write them a song. <laughs> uh, not a problem. They might be getting married or have a sweetheart and they want a song. Do it. Then get you a business bank account. A lot of these you can get online for free. Uh, so Google that. Business bank account with your business name, whatever that is. I don't know what you want to do. Uh, you want to get copyrights on your merch and your brand. So if you're the Big Sky Purple Band, then brand that and get a copyright in that name and start your merch trail. Uh, and that can be, your branding is also something you're gonna have a logo and use on all kinds of different things, flyers and so forth. Uh, those are the basic things you need to do. Uh, copyright your music. Uh, if you're doing a recording with a band or anyone else have a split sheet. A split sheet just assigns who owns what of what. That way later when it gets popular you don't have problems and everybody says oh we're all friends. Well sure you're all friends until you're not. <laughs> you're friends until money is involved then nobody's your friend. And remember, you don't do business with the people. You do business with the people they are legally bound to. Your good friend is going to get him a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Uh, and that's when, you know, your heartache begins. Or you do a song with a friend and your friend dies. Your friend got married and died. And the song hits big. Well, guess who's coming for you? It's going to be maybe not the wife or husband of that friend. Maybe they're one of their relatives that has a legal tie to them. They might have kids and the grandparents might be having to raise those kids and they might want that money and need that money. Now, I'm not saying everything's like this, but let me tell you, uh, things happen. People get sued all the time. They say half of marriages break up, so you can't even really trust your spouse. So, you know, have a prenup. <laughs> your music's your music. Uh, let her keep her tips from, uh, you know, the restaurant and you keep your music. Uh, uh, you know, everybody says, well, if, if you love somebody, it wouldn't matter. Well, exactly, so it shouldn't matter to them. If they love you, your money shouldn't matter. Uh, and have it set out that way you know uh, but your music you have to be careful who you uh, go and talk to even if you talk to a person about a project you need to bring in a non-disclosure and also a an agreement that no agreement has been made until it's in writing because uh, uh, who's Kim Bassinger, who's an actress. Uh, I don't know if you know who she is. She was active up until about 10 years ago. I don't know what she's doing now. She was one of the It girls. And uh, like Shailene Woodley or whatever her name is. Shailene Woodley. Shailene Woodley. She's a good actress. <clears throat> anyway, Kim Bassinger was very wealthy. And she went in and talked to some people about doing a movie and then decided she didn't want to do it. Well, she never signed anything and she never really agreed to do it 100%, but they sued her and they got millions of dollars from her. Uh, so be careful when you talk to somebody about a project, uh, sign it, and a non-disclosure agreement just means that nobody's gonna tell other people they've been talking to you or what you've talked about. So, uh, you know, uh, they offer you a million dollars to write an album. You can't go tell, if you sign a non-disclosure, you can't go tell people, oh, they offered me a million dollars, unless the agreement allows it. It depends on what's there. 
So just remember that uh, you need to learn about contracts even if you're not a musician. If you're just a person, especially a young person, you're in high school, you need to start learning about contracts. Google contracts uh, and see what they're like. Uh, go take a class. Uh, there's a home extension classes online about contracts. Go talk to an attorney. They can give you a breakdown. Get to know get to know some people. Collaborate. Get you in a person that's an attorney that's just beginning an attorney or is taking new clients or just like some of them have YouTube channels. So ask them a question, you know, send it in there. Uh, and uh, you might want to end up putting them on retainer, which means you give them some money, a few hundred dollars or a dollar or whatever, with an agreement that they're going to be your attorney when something comes up and you know who to call. That's a, a good feeling and it really makes a difference to people. Well, listen, I have been, you know, John, uh, Tremoni is my attorney and I got to go talk to him or whatever. Collaborate with engineers and artists and, uh, you know, if you don't have a lot of money, you can do some work for them. I mean, you write a song for these people. When you, that's another thing you can do is you can write songs for specific people. But you have a good contract and the contract is they own only the recording you're giving them. Uh, for their personal use and the lyrics are for them. It's a poem. The music you re retain because that melody you might put to another song later uh, and they can't take that recording and sell it. If they do, you make money. You put that in the contract that you're registering their song on Spotify. They don't get the money. You get the money uh, and so forth. And, uh, Go to your attorney to set that up. But write them a song and let them do some engineering for you. Write a person a song or do a performance. You do a wedding, do a, a bar mitzvah, do a birthday party, whatever. Uh, it's what you make it. Listen, performances, you know, people, well, I'm not going to get out there and do all that and be a clown. Well, then you don't want to do your job. Do your job. You're a musician. Go out there and give the best performance you can. If it's little kids, if it's adults, if they're drunk, if they're out of their minds, who cares? Go and do that and perform. Uh, and just get in your bubble and do your performance and then analyze it later. Uh, but record your performance. Have several people record it. Have people post it on Facebook and Instagram and Snap it and all this stuff. Because that's the best, you can't pay enough. You can, you could pay $3,000 and not get as much advertising as, as 10 or 12 people posting stuff and sharing it. And uh, you be getting a recording and putting it on YouTube and Facebook and wherever you want to be. So, uh, so anyway, so I've just scratched the surface and, and uh, I might put together a little worksheet of things you should do. Uh, ideas and talking points about this. Again, I'm not an attorney. Uh, I'm not a manager. I'm not a, even very successful selling my own songs. I mean, I'm, I'm just started doing that. I just started writing, uh, really recording. I've written songs for years. I've just recorded them here about a year ago. So I'm just kind of in the infant stage. But uh, so I'm following all this. I've got all this done. I'm copywriting my merch. I'm at that point. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, everywhere else. I send in stuff for sync rights. I perform all the time virtual. I'm going back to in person. Uh, I'm getting my t-shirts all done. I've, I have, a, a, what you call it, a, copyrighted my publishing and my recordings I've got. I've, I'm with BMI. Uh, not that they're the best, that's just the one I'm at. Uh, they seem to have better payouts for sync. So I'm with BMI. Uh, I'm also a member of ASCAP as a, a, a payer, a, a music school, so we pay them. But uh, I have an admin, which I have CD Baby. I'm all on Spotify, Apple, Verve, uh, Amazon Music, uh, Napster, on and on and on. Uh, and uh, I have an LLC. I have a bank account. Uh, like I said, I'm copywriting this. So I have not met with an attorney to get. I'm, I'm looking for someone. If I find someone I'm, I'm on the Google and stuff, I'll probably look around for someone young because I'm old. So 
you know, they'll 20 years from now when I'm uh, old and, and crazy, I'll have had a relationship with them and, and trust them. Uh, and uh, I do my own recording, but I'm probably looking to get people to do that just because of it. And I'm, I'm working on uh, videos, YouTube videos doing that. I'm, I'm working on setting up and doing a lot of those. I have, I have hundreds of YouTube videos out there, but I do lots of covers. Do lots of covers. Nobody knows your music and don't care about it. Do covers. Cover, cover, cover. Your whole stage show should be covers. Maybe one of your songs or two. Put them in the middle, get your guitar, sit and do a little, do one of yours and teach it to them. You know, uh, I have a song, uh, How the Time Goes By. So I teach people. I say, here's the verse. Hoist your sails and man your guns. Sing with me. Hoist your sails. And then I, you know, oh, how the time goes by. Have them sing it with me like you're teaching them a song. Then sing the song. And have stuff on your merch table. Say, I sang, how the time goes, you know, all that stuff. Have them video themselves singing it. Uh, there's just tons of stuff you can do, and I know I'm rambling. But we'll do a uh, some blogs on each one of these, which really should do it. I'll, I'm going to come up with a little worksheet of, of how to get prepared to do what you're doing. Uh, there's a lot of people out there doing it better than I could do, but uh, a lot of people don't do it, and a lot of people don't see it. The best... Advice could be out there, but if you don't hear it, it ain't going to happen. Uh, so there you have it. That's our show for today. And uh, uh, thank you for listening and thank you for sending in all your uh, uh, questions and, and send in some comments. And I'd love to know how you're doing and uh, collaborate with me. Uh, like my uh, YouTube page or uh, the podcast. I'll go in and find you if you're a musician and like you if you're in the central florida area i'd love to hear from you because i'd love to get together i'm going to start a dream team meeting uh, i might start a couple i might do one just for musicians and and so forth but uh so we can all collaborate and see what's going on so uh anyway uh thank you all and we will see you next time this is tony underwood the the music man this is quiz the music man you can find my music everywhere please share this with people you think would like it post it uh, go listen to my music on Spotify. Go to my YouTube page. Buy music. Uh, and when I have merch, buy that too. Uh, so we'll see you next week. Thank you.